Good day, STEM students. This is Felman L. Maninang, your General Physics 2 teacher. Ang teacher sa alam na may alam. Okay, so continue our discussion for quarter 3, week 1. This is our video 3 about Gauss Law and Electric Potential. So remind ko lang ha. Ang ginagawa natin for week 1 is just Gauss Law. Next week na yung electric potential. So, to continue our discussion for Gauss Law with regards to word problem, I will now discuss basic symmetrical Gaussian shapes. So, ito yung pinaka-simple equation lang niya. Eh, no? Pero sabi ko nga, the Gaussian shape will determine the equations that we will use. Kasi nga, ano ito eh, naka... Uh, differential, na naka-differential calculus ang ginagamit natin dito. So, we will have to derive the equation depending on the symmetrical shape being used. So, to introduce those shapes and equations, I will use a video clip. Focus kayo dun sa mga uh, boxes na red kasi yun lang naman yung mga equation dun. Pero ipapakita sa video kung paano ito na-derive. So, in order to calculate the electric field, you need a symmetry. And there are three types of symmetry, spherical, cylindrical, and planar symmetry. We will start with the spherical symmetry. This is a thin hollow sphere with radius r, and we will bring a positive charge q into the thin shell, which is uniformly distributed. Now we need to find the electric field inside the sphere at a distance r1 from the center and outside the sphere at a distance r2 from the center. To do that, we need to determine our Gaussian surface. In this case, we will choose concentric spheres as Gaussian surfaces, one smaller with radius r1 and other larger with radius r2. Now we need to use two symmetry arguments that will help us calculate the electric field. The first symmetry argument shows that the magnitude of the electric field is the same at any point, since the charge here is uniformly distributed. The second symmetry argument shows that if there is an electric field, it must point either radially outwards or radially inwards. In this example, we have a positive charge, which means that the field is pointing outwards. From the previous equations, we know that the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared times the magnitude of the electric field E, is equal to the charge inside the sphere Q divided by the permittivity of free space epsilon naught. However, we don't have a charge inside the smaller sphere, so the electric field is zero. If a closed surface has no net charge enclosed by it, then the net flux through it will be zero. Now let's see what happens with the larger sphere. The symmetry arguments hold for this sphere as well. But if we take a look at the equation, we will notice that Q is not zero, because there is a charge inside that sphere. So the magnitude of the electric field will be equal to the charge enclosed divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r2 squared. If we draw a graph with the distance on the x-axis and the magnitude of the electric field on the y-axis, we can notice the following. Up to the point r, which is the radius of our initial sphere, we have no electric field, but then it reaches its maximum value and decreases as the distance increases. The second type of symmetry is cylindrical symmetry. Let's say we have an infinite line of positive charge with uniform linear charge density lambda, and we want to figure out what the electric field is at some point above the line at distance r. Here, we will choose a cylinder as a Gaussian surface with a center along the line of charge. We don't have an electric field through the end cups. The electric field will be pointing out through the walls of the cylinder. Also, we have symmetry here, which allows us to use the Gauss's law in order to calculate the electric field. We can calculate the flux using the same equation that we used previously. But now we need to find the surface area around the cylinder, including the wall, without the end caps. For that purpose, we need to cut the cylinder along its length, and we will find out that the area is equal to 2 pi rl. So 2 pi rl times e is equal to the charge and close divided by epsilon naught. The charge density lambda is the total charge q per length l, so the charge enclosed is equal to lambda l. So 2 pi r l e is equal to lambda l divided by epsilon naught. The electric field is equal to lambda l divided by 2 pi r l epsilon naught. L cancels out, so the electric field is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r epsilon naught. 
The last type of symmetry is planar symmetry. In this example we have a flat infinite large horizontal plate. We will bring a charge onto this plate with a uniform charge density sigma. Sigma is actually an amount of charge per area and is expressed in coulombs per squared meter. Now we want to calculate the electric field in the surrounding area of this plate, let's say at a distance d. In this case we are going to choose a cylinder again as a Gaussian surface. The cylinder intersects the plate and in that intersection we have a charge enclosed. In order to be able to calculate the electric field we need to meet three conditions. First, the cylinder end cups with an area A must be parallel to the plate. Second, the walls of the cylinders must be perpendicular to the plate. Third, the distance from the plate to the end cups D must be the same above and below the plate. Now that we met the symmetry requirements, we can calculate the electric field using the Gauss's law. We are not going to have any horizontal components of the electric field, only vertical coming out of the two end cups. Sigma is equal to the charge divided by the surface and from this equation we can see that the charge Q is equal to sigma times the area. The flux from the wall of the cylinder is equal to zero, so the total flux consists of two components, the flux through the top cup plus the flux through the bottom cup of the cylinder. This is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught or sigma A divided by epsilon naught. But also the flux through the top and the flux through the bottom can be expressed as Ea, so the total flux is equal to 2 Ea. Finally, the electric field is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. If the plate is positively charged, the electric field would be pointing outward, and if it is negatively charged, the electric field will be pointing inwards. If we draw a graph with the distance d on the x-axis and the electric field on the y-axis, we can notice that the electric field has a constant value of sigma over 2 epsilon naught and it doesn't depend on the distance from the plane. Now let's take a look at another more complex situation of two infinitely large parallel plates. The first plate has a surface charge density plus sigma and the plate below has a surface charge density minus sigma. The distance between them is d, so what is the electric field anywhere in the space? The positively charged plate has an electric field pointing away from the plate, equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. It doesn't depend on the distance from the plate, so it continues below. The negatively charged plate has an electric field pointing towards the plate, also equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. In order to calculate the total electric field, we are going to use the superposition principle by adding vectors. The vectors that are in the opposite direction cancel out, so the electric field there is zero. The vectors between the plates are in the same direction, so the electric field is sigma divided by epsilon naught. Here's how the electric field lines would look like. They will be pointing away from the positively charged plate and towards the negatively charged plate and the electric field outside will be zero. Okay? Okay, so before I proceed to the example, ulitin ko lang na yung binanggit kanina. Meron tayong three symmetrical shape, yung spherical, yung isa yung cylindrical, actually yung para yun sa straight line charge. And then the last one is for a plane. Tapos, sa didiscuss ko ngayon, I will just discuss yung spherical and cylindrical. Yung planar, lalo na yung dalawa na plane, I will later discuss that pag ang pinag-usapan na natin capacitance. Kasi, ano yun, application niya kasi is capacitor. So, for my first example, I have a problem here. An amount of charge distributed uniformly throughout a spherical shell where inner radius is equal to 1 cm. So, tingnan nyo ha. Sir, mahawig ah. Pero, syempre, kailangan gawin natin ng ano to. No? Gawin natin ng ibang given to. So, hindi siya kaparehas yan sa activity sheet nyo ha. And, outer radius is 3 cm. So, medyo nilayo ko yung ating outer radius. At the center, there is a point charge of 50 micro coulomb. So, I would like you to not uh, focus on this prefix. No? That is micro coulomb. Find the electric field and electric flux inside and outside the shell. So, ituturo ko lang sa inyo is electric field. Tapos, since naituro ko na sa unang video electric flux, kayo na yung mag-compute no? From electric field, makukuha nyo na yung electric flux. Okay. So, ang given natin, we have the R2. 
Kung mapapansin nyo, wala si R1, no? Parang disenyo lang si R1. Pero, in-emphasize nyo sa video that R1, ang electric charge at electric field, uh, ang electric field at electric flux sa lugar na yun is zero. No? Yun yung sinabi doon sa simula nung video. And then, Q is 50 microcoulomb. Converting that into coulomb, we will have 50 times 10 to the negative 6. Kasi yun yung value ng micro. It is 1 over 1 million. Okay? And then the epsilon naught, may nakakatalaga na karindi pa ulit-ulit kanina, no? Epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb square per newton meter square. So, yan yung unit niya. Ang purpose natin niya, mapakita ko ngayon para makikita yung cancellations. And then the equation for this, no? For spherical uh, Gaussian shape, no? Tapos yung ating charge ay wala doon sa center, no? Is E is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught radius 2 square. So, yan lang naman yan. Medyo mahaba, no? Medyo mahirap siyang kabisaduhin. So, yung advantage natin ngayon, hindi natin siya kailangan kabisaduhin. Kailangan lang natin siya isulat. And then, papalitan natin siya ngayon ng mga given. So, si Q is 50 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, kung papansin nyo, hindi ko na siya ginawang standard form. No? Hindi ko na siya 5.0 times 10 to the negative 5. So, hindi na gano'n. Kasi mag magkakaroon din naman kayo ng uh, pagmumove mamaya sa dulo, eh. So, yan muna yung ating Q. And then, yung ilalim, ito yung mahaba. 4 pi is 4 times 3.14 times epsilon naught, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, multiplied to 0.03. As remember, square natin yan. So, yung 4 times 3.14, 12.56 yun. So, walang unit. And then, 0.03 square natin, 0.0009. So, kung yung square natin, yan ito yung alabas. And then, mumultiply natin itong tatlo, we will have this 1, ano, uh, 0.1 times 10 to the negative 12. Itong 111.16 na yan, ito yan pag minultiply ito. So, we have here 50 times 10 to the negative 6. C na lang. Kapansin uh, nyo, amin, mawawala yun. Newton per coulomb, yung makakancel yung isang C. Tapos, 0.1 times 10 to the negative, over 0.1 times 10 to the negative 12. So, yun lang po yun. Pag dinivide natin yan, that is, actually, 500 yan pag dinivide mo. 5.0 times 10 to the 6 power yan, kasi negative uh, 6 minus negative 12 is positive 6. So, minove ko na siya, kasi 500 yan, minove ko, ginawa kong 5. Pinaliit ko yung value ng first factor, kaya lalaki yung value ng dalawa rito. So, 5.0 times 10 to the 8 newton per coulomb. So, yan po yung ating sagot for that type of question. So, para yan sa spherical. So, ulitin ko, wala yung R1, no? Pinabanggit lang yun, pero R1, at that position, E is equal to 0. And then, kayo nang bahalang kumuha nung uh, electric flux using equation doon sa second video. And then, for example, number 2, ito naman, paano kapag line? An infinitely long line of charge carries 0.1 C along each 1 meter of length. Find the electric field 0.25 meter from the line of charge. So, ito yung given natin. 0.1 coulomb per meter, tapos yung R natin, 0.25, tapos epsilon nat natin. And then, ito yung equation natin. E is equal to lambda over 2 pi radius epsilon nat. So, madali lang yan. So, nasa ibabo si lambda, 0.1 centim uh, coulomb per meter, tapos multiply mo lang lahat nun nasa ilalim, yung ating 2 pi times yung R natin, times the epsilon nat, you will have 1.57 meter. Tapos multiply mo siya sa, e sa epsilon nat natin, Uh, and then divide. Pag dinivide mo yan, we will have 0.01 times 10 to the 12. No? Kasi uh, 0 to, tapos negative 12 to, 0 minus negative 12 is positive 12. So, yan po ang ating sagot. Okay? So, for further question, you could contact me no? during our synchronous sessions. So, I hope you have learned about cost loss. In general physics, calma lang.